We, we miss, miss you. you. Happy Easter. Hey, New Walk, we miss you guys. Yep, we've been stuck at our house like you guys have been, but it's been good to catch up online with some of you, and we're hoping this thing is over real quick so we can get back together face to face real soon. Have a happy Easter. Hey, New Walk. Happy Easter. We miss you. Hey, hey New Walk. Happy Easter. Easter. We miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Hey, hey New Walk. Happy Easter. Easter. We're home, just like you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Hey guys, we miss you. We're praying for you. We hope to see you real soon. Happy Easter from the Lindsay family. Hey, New Watcher. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Hey, New Walk. I'm here with my wife, Lily. Hi, guys. We are staying home, not getting haircuts, but we're able to worship together as well. So let's stay home and worship together. Happy Easter. We miss you. Bye, guys. Happy Easter! Happy Easter, New Walk family. We love you, we miss you, and we can't wait till we can be back together soon. Hey, New Walk, we sure are missing being with y'all this Easter weekend. But we're doing like y'all are doing, and we're worshiping at home with our family. And we just want to say, Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! Hey guys, I'm Rusty. And I'm Larson, and this is Judah. And we just want to wish you a happy Easter. Guys, we're so grateful you decided to tune in with us today, and we just want to take a minute and welcome you and tell you that we're so thankful that you decided to tune in. So please comment below. Let us know where you're watching from, and we just want to wish you a happy Easter. Happy Easter. New Walk Live. Let's sing. Come on. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Come on! I raise a hallelujah And my weapon is a melody well, I raise a hallelujah
so glad that you guys are watching. Easter is gonna happen whether we are here in this building or whether we are online. So we're so glad that you're with us. Jesus is alive, we love to worship, but we wanna sing about how great he is as well. So will you take a moment in your house and will you sing this out with us and just remember how great our God is. It says, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars.
borrowed for three days and his body there would not remain cause our God has robbed the says the final word the cross says the final word sorrow may come in the darkest night but the cross says the final word The cross as the final word. The cross as the final word. Evil may put up its strongest fight, but the cross as the final word. Nothing is stronger. Nothing speaks after the cross of Jesus. No disease, no pandemic. There is nothing 
Come on. There's nothing stronger. There's nothing higher. There's nothing greater than the name of Jesus. All the honor, all the power, all the glory in the name of Jesus. There's nothing strong. Hey guys, I'm Rusty Griffith and I'm the student pastor here at New Walk and this is... I'm Larson Griffith and I serve in kids ministry along with Rusty on Wednesdays at Ant. Is that it? And I take care of our son, Judah. Did you forget his name? No. <laughs> guys, I'm so grateful during this season that Jesus had the final say over death, hell, and the grave through the cross. And I, I don't know about you, but I think the devil had an incredible plan. He thought he was gonna win, but little did he know that Jesus was gonna win the battle forever this day, 2,000 years ago. And so because of that, we're celebrating today. And if you joined us in the celebration for the first time, we call you a VIP. And so let's give it up for our VIPs. Woo! Yeah, you're a VIP if this is your first time ever watching with us, and, and we think you're incredibly important. So take some time to fill out a Connect card and let us know it's your first time. You may get a gift in the mail. You never know what it could be. So we'd love for you to be a part of that. If you've watched several times, if this is not your first time or your second time or your third time or your 307th time, then we'd call you just a regular attender, but you're still incredibly important to us. So please fill out a Connect card. Let us know where you're watching from, what's going on in your life. And if you have a prayer request, please let, let, let us know that as well, because we want to take some time to pray for you. Guys, it may seem like this is going to be a very abnormal situation. It may seem like this is going to continue forever. And if that is the case, if it continues for a while, then we still want to operate as the body of Christ during this season. And we still want to pray for you. We still want to be able to go to God for you and pray over whatever it is in your life that you're dealing with. So please take some time to do that. So also, we have some crazy things going on right now to keep you locked in, to keep you involved. And Larson's going to tell us a little bit, I think, about our kids' ministry. Yeah, so we have a lot going on. Um, if you go to our kids ministry page, it's New Walk Kids on Facebook, then you will see a specific Easter video just for your kids. And we want you to just lock in with them and learn with them and teach them all about Jesus because that's what really matters. Yeah, I think she's absolutely right. That is all that matters. And isn't it amazing that we get to tell our children about the greatest story ever told? But let's say I'm a normal person that doesn't have kids and I'm pretending to be normal for a little while. If that's the case, how do I lock in to New Walk during this season? Because maybe I feel a little disconnected. So how do I how do I lock into what the church is doing during this season? Yeah, so there's multiple things you can do, but we have content for you just about every single day. We have devotions from Pastor Gary. We have our Facebook page that has music and all sorts of playlists for you to listen to and just keep focused and shifting your focus on Jesus. And we also have um, our kids ministry, which I mentioned already. And then we have our Amped page um, on Wednesdays where we have a live stream for Amped. And then we also have um, where you can have like a small group after. So there's tons of things that you can do. Make sure you're checking out our social media to stay connected. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sitting at home a lot and um, maybe you're having these battles with, you know, 
your fake coworkers or whatever you're dealing with inside your house, I don't know, and, and you're battling these things, you're like, you know what, I need a break, I need a break. And so if I needed a break from anything, not my wife, because she's incredible and she makes great food, but if I was, if I needed a break from anything, the one great way to do that is through virtual groups. And so we have an opportunity right now where you can log in and join a group right now and be able to spend some time diving over the Word of God with a group of people from your church. And so we'd love for you to take part in that. If you're doing, a lot of them are through Zoom, uh, our, our phone call system. And so if you do Zoom, you can even change your background and you can feel like you're in Hawaii or where would you go? You could go anywhere. Uh, Australia. Snakes. No, sir. So uh, you would love to be able to kind of escape from that reality and be a part of that. So we'd love for you to join in that with us. So go to our face, our, our website, um, newwalk.church, and you can sign up for a virtual group right there. And we would love to have you on this journey with us. Also, just so you're aware, guys, we hope not, but this could be our normal for a little while. And if this is our normal, we're going to continue to serve you and continue to serve our community through this season. And so because of that, we want you to continue to partner with us through giving. And so, listen, even during the craziness of the season, I know God has been faithful to us and our family, and I know he's going to continue to be faithful to you guys as well. So I think we need to continue to give in that pursuit as well. God has commanded us to give, and so even during this season, we're going to continue to give. And so we'd love for you to partner with us as we continue to reach our community, we continue to kind of pursue the lost, we continue to do everything that God has commanded us, and we pray you will too. So Pastor Gary's fixing to bring an incredible message about this season, about this, this unbelievable victory that Jesus has given us and given God and His glory. And so take a minute, tune in, and we can't wait to watch and hear what God is going to say today. Happy Easter, New Walk Church. Man, we are so glad you're watching with us, uh, though I miss being with you, uh, connected in the setting of the building of the local church. I know that our message is getting out there. It's going into all kinds of different places, not just to people who call New Walk Church their home, uh, but people that are outside uh, the, the connectivity, uh, at least previously, that were part of our church. Now they are getting to hear about New Walk and ultimately what we love the most, the message of Jesus Christ. So again, happy, happy Easter to all of you watching. Now, of course, I made a little plug last week about this, and I just want to say it again, and th that is this, that our church is still being the church. Those of you that call New Walk Church your home, I want to say I'm so proud uh, to, to be able to be connected with you as your pastor because you are continuing to uh, reach out to people. We have a prayer team that's, that's praying for people. Uh, we, are, we are serving meals. We're reaching out to our neighbors. We're uh, helping one another where, where we can, at least. And, and I've been loving to see how you've been hanging in there. Uh, those of you who have been staying strong in your faith, man, I, it has been an honor uh, more than ever being your pastor, watching this kind of stuff take place. And, and so we continue to move on on this journey of doing things online where the enemy was so excited that he was going to shut down the doors of churches all over America and around the world because uh, of this virus thing. Now, through video, the actual message of Jesus is going everywhere. I also want to take time to thank those of you, just as I did last week, who are continue to get, to, continuing to give and support our ministry. We have people that are still being paid. They're still faithfully giving to our church. As a matter of fact, in large numbers, and I want to say thank you for that. As a matter of fact, about 10 people gave to New Walk for the very first time last week, and I thank God, praise God for that as well, because it is helping us keep things going here at our church. Now, one reminder about watching online is, is you have to engage. You have to connect. And what we're seeing each week is more and more people are watching these. They're connecting more and more. They're clicking the links that we're providing on Facebook. They're clicking the links around them as they're watching on the newwalk.live site. And they're getting engaged. Each week we're getting more connect cards uh, electronically. We're getting more prayer requests. We're getting more comments as people are commenting. And we're figuring this thing out. Hey, the connectivity that we can have right now during this season 
It's online, so get engaged and connect with others and connect with the church through the various ways we give you on the online settings. Now, I do want to say that we are also, on this Easter, kicking off a brand new series. I thought, man, if we're going to be doing this for a little bit, hey, let's kick off a new series. And what I wanted to do was start a series to help really answer some of the deepest questions that people deal with when it comes to really believing this faith of Christianity. Some of maybe the struggles that we have in believing. We're calling this series, Is It Real? This faith, what we believe, is it really real? And we're going to answer these questions along the way. And I'm going to start answering some of those questions here with you today in our time uh, together. And now here's what I've discovered as a pastor over the last 14 years. Probably you've seen it uh, in our country the last 20, 30 years especially. Here's what we're seeing more and more, and it's really stunning to watch. People saying, you know what, I, I don't know if I really believe it's real anymore. Like even in the South, where at one time in the South, where it was supposed to be assured, guaranteed that everybody was going to believe, you know, and, and yet here we are, people are struggling to still believe that God is real, and he, at least they're, they're on this, we're sort of on this decline, this journey of saying, I'm not sure that I trust in this God any longer. I'm not sure if I really believe he is real. I'm seeing it happen more and more, and what I think is oftentimes, uh, for a lot of people, it's just maybe you're feeling like you wanted more evidence, or maybe you're, you feel like you were disappointed, or whatever it may be, and we just kind of push away. Now, God's Word gives us the truth. It hasn't changed. It has been true for us thousands of years, and it still is today. But because people are pushing more and more away from the Word, when trials come and difficulties come, uh, they miss the truth that's in the Bible about difficulties. They miss the truth in the Bible about struggles, and they push away more and more. I happen to believe that for a lot of people, the struggle that they're having is not really like something that the, of an atheist view. It's not really like that. It's just, I, I want to believe, Pastor Gary, I want to believe that, that this God is real, but because, and, and I don't know, maybe... Maybe because you were hurt at church or somebody who said they, was a, they were a Christian hurt you. Maybe you saw somebody who, who was a hypocrite. You know, you thought they were a hypocrite, and, you know, they said they believed, but then they did some terrible things, and that turned you off from your faith. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, just a complete disappointment because God didn't do what you wanted him to do when you wanted him to do it, and now you question your belief, your faith. I happen to believe that those are the scenarios that are the more likely scenarios. Not like, hey, I just don't believe, I just don't believe in God at all, but I'm struggling to believe because some hurt, disappointment, struggle that I faced in my faith journey. This is oftentimes the bigger picture, and that's really what I'm going to be spending my time on today, just trying to focus on crossing some of those Hurdles Again, when you read your Bible, when you're deep in, your, in the strengthening of your faith through God's Word, you can work through these struggles. But many times what we're seeing is this decline in really seeking God's, God's Word. And so then it makes it easy for when a difficulty comes, a struggle comes, when things don't go the way you want them to go. Or maybe you're a student in school and, and you heard the professor speak poorly about Christianity. Uh, maybe at, at school as your teacher, your professor at college, uh, maybe some other setting or you watched a Na National Geographic show and, you know, it made it out like maybe your God was a fairy tale or your Jesus was a fairy tale and that was enough to kind of send you over the edge and make you question, do I really believe what it is that I thought I believed, we're going to give you incredible, solid information in this series. But what I'm really going to focus on, I think, is some of the low-hanging fruit, 
what I might call the low-hanging fruit of some of the disbelief or struggle that people are having more commonly than some of the more hardcore atheist views. When it comes to struggling with your faith, you know what I, I put in your notes? If you've got those there in front of you and you can view those there online on Facebook or on newwalk.live, I, I wrote in my, in my notes and they're in yours, sadly, here's what people are relying on. Instead of the Word of God, they are relying on something like the telephone game for their information about God. The telephone game, you, you know what the telephone game was, right? The telephone game of communication was that one person had, gets a message, and then they call up the next person, and they hang up, and then they call up the next person, you know, and one person passes it on to the next, to the next, to the next, and by the time it gets to like 20 or 30 people, the original message has been muddled and changed all along the way. By the time you get to the end, the guy, the person at the end, they've gotten a completely different message, and they were just trusting the previous person that they heard for the truth. And I think a lot of people today in their walk with God are just trusting what people say along the way for how they're getting their truth. We're going to push past that because here's what the Bible says about our faith and about the obvious nature of there being a God. It says this in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who oppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky Sky, through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature. So here's what it says, they have no excuse for not knowing God. The Bible says it's all around us, the evidences of God. They're everywhere. We can see them all around us. And you don't have an excuse for not knowing God when you really open up your eyes. Today's message for those who have been pushing back, for those who are struggling to see the evidences of God. I want to circle back on some hot-button issues in our culture today when it comes to faith and address some things on this Easter weekend to help you draw closer to God or maybe for some of you come off the fence and say yes to Jesus for the very first time. I wrote this in your notes. If God is real, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to address some very very key questions that people have, and that's kind of the format here, that somebody might say, okay, Pastor Gary, I want to believe in this God, but if God is real, you know, here's what I need him to be, and this is a very wrong way to think, but this is the way people are thinking about it today when it comes to God. I need God to be a Netflix kind of God, a Netflix God. Uh, I'll, I'll explain this. Uh, let me set the stage for you. You say, what, what, what is this? Uh, it's people wanting God to be a Netflix God. I really believe that's where we are in our culture today. Let's go back, though, a little bit. Uh, some of you, just where you're seated right now watching this, I don't know where you're watching this, maybe wherever you're at, you just, if you're just even by yourself, if you remember the 80s, okay, and television in the 80s, Perhaps you might raise your hand if you remember some of these shows in the 80s. Maybe early 80s, you remembered things like the Dukes of Hazard, possibly. Or possibly you remember some of the uh, famous shows like, like The Cosby Show or Family Ties. Maybe some of you watched Cheers. How about Miami Vice? Ladies, how about The Golden Girls? Maybe you watched some of those, especially in the early 90s. Moving forward into the early 90s, some of you watched Friends or you watched... Uh, you, you watched something uh, like one of those popular shows that many people watched was like Seinfeld. Let's think of that for just a moment. Okay, now, if you watched those shows during those times, here's what we had to do to watch those shows. Ready? Once a week, we would wait for the show. Oh, man, we had to wait for the next show to drop. And it would be like a 30-minute show, maybe an hour, 30 minutes, something like that. And we would gather around, okay, get your blanket, get your food, get your popcorn. Here we go. It's Thursday night, special night. We're going to get to watch the show. We've been waiting for the new episode all week. And we'd sit there in front of the TV, and we'd watch that show for 30 minutes. And then it was over. And then we had to wait till the next week. <laughs> and by the way, I, and I know for some of you who didn't grow up in that day and age, you're already going, wait, you had to wait once a week to watch the show? Like, you didn't just get to 
to binge watch it? No, we had to wait. We had to wait every week, and then when the season was over, we had to wait like four or five months for the next series, the next season of episodes. And then, and then here was the crazy thing. When we watch it for 30 minutes, about four times during that 30 minutes, we would have to break away for three minutes of commercials. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about, commercials. You're like, what? what? I don't even know what that is, because you just watch these shows, and you binge watch them, and you just, you watch one season, and the next, and the next, and, and that's really kind of the way Netflix is, right? Or some of these other uh, streaming services, they just download an entire season, and you can watch it. You can, some of you right now, during this quarantine, you, watch, you can watch uh, eight seasons of something, and you can watch it eight seasons in uh, maybe two days, you know, because you're just binge watching. And that's something that's kind of new to us, but it's a part of where we are in our culture today, and it's an on-demand, I want it now, give it to me now culture. And here's the problem. This mentality has bled into the things of the faith as well. People today, they want God to do what they want now, give it to me now. God, I want answers now. And if God doesn't provide for them now, like the Netflix God that they want God to be, give me the instant streaming God now, they get mad, they take their ball, they go home, they cry because they don't want to wait. What does a baby do? What does a baby do when a baby is hungry, it lets you know, I want it now, it screams for it now. Guess what spiritual babies do? People, maybe, maybe you're new to the faith, and you're not, a, you're not a bad person, you're just new to the faith. You're what we call a spiritual baby. A spiritual baby doesn't understand how to be patient for the things of God. They want to they wanna get it now. That's what spiritual babies do, but as they develop a patience in following God, they develop a maturity out of, out of that babyhood and childhood into adulthood. They're able to grow spiritually spiritually, but I see this happening, and I think this is why this decline over the last 20, 30 years, especially me and my 13, 14 years of pastoring this church, people struggling in their faith because they want God to do what they want God to do. They want it right away, Jesus said, and it says this in John 14 and verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you? Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And what Jesus says is the way I work and the way I operate is not the way the world operates. We're celebrating Easter. We're reminded of what Jesus did when he came to this earth, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. But he modeled something for us. He showed us some things. He spoke to us about some things. And he says, hey, hey, what you're looking for in the things of this world is very different than the way God offers it. You know what? And here's what I see people doing. They'll say, hey, Pastor Gary, I wanted God to be real, but he didn't come through the way that I wanted him to come through for my depression. I wanted this thing to be dealt with. I wanted it now. He didn't come through, and so I walk away from God. Hey, Pastor Gary, I wanted God to deliver for my marriage, and he didn't deliver the way that I wanted him to deliver, and so I'm frustrated with God. I'm questioning, is he even real at this point? I don't know that I really believe that he exists because he didn't come through. I wanted him to do this. I wanted him to do that. Give it to me. Download it. Give it to me right away. I need to tell you this Easter, a Netflix God does not exist. <laughs> he does not operate like that. His word was clear that he does not operate in this fashion, though in your flesh you may want it and want it now. God is working out a whole separate timing, a whole separate plan. I wrote this in my notes, and you will have it as well. God does not exist to serve us. We exist to serve him. God, uh, God is, is not there to be, you know, our cosmic Coke machine that we just put in the money and we just get it, get out whatever it is we want to get out. God is the creator. We are the created. God is the potter and we are the clay. He is the Lord of all, and we are the servants. And this is really hard because, again, in a culture where we want it and we want it now, we want it the way we want it, we have to push away from that and go completely 180 and say, I bend the knee to serve God. Listen, hear me. You're watching this Easter. 
Know this, from beginning to end of Scripture, the Bible is clear that the one primary reason you were created was to worship and serve God. That's hard sometimes to wrap our minds around it in this culture of instant, instant, give it now. I wrote in your notes, instead, we've got to always remember that God's ways are higher than our ways. God's ways are always higher and we have to hold on to that in times where we don't always understand. And as a pastor, I have been with families during very dark times. And I've had them ask some really difficult questions. Maybe questions, those of you that are on the fence, maybe questions that you've asked, you know, in, in certain things. And, and, and I'll be straight up honest, I don't always know the answer. In fact, I rarely know the answers. And a lot of the questions I get, I just don't know the answer to. They're, they're not in my pay grade. And I want to be comf- I want to comfort people, but to give a terrible answer, be, I mean, I, it's a, I could never try to presume that I understand God's ways. I just don't. I've come to that realization that I could never really fully understand His ways when a child is born handicapped. I don't understand it fully when a really good person is struck down in the middle of a very healthy life, maybe by a drunk driver. I, I don't fully understand what God, I don't understand what's happening, God. I, I can't fully explain it when there's some sort of terrorist attack that takes place or when there's a coronavirus and all this chaos is ensuing, I, to pretend that I understand exactly what God is doing, I don't and neither do you. And throughout the Scriptures, here's what we learn, that these things do happen, but God calls on us. He calls on us to trust Him. Here's the Scripture, Isaiah 55 and verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That means that I got to trust him. I, I have to trust. And you know, it is true that in times of trust, sometimes in the long run, you do see in, in, in where in the moment it didn't go the way you wanted, but in time, sometimes things happen and you can get some glimpses of maybe why God did something. Some of you have experienced this, you know. You wanted a job and you prayed for a job and God didn't give you that job and my gosh, you know, the, you, 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 at the moment you thought it was everything, but then five years later you're in a better job and you're sitting there going, my gosh, now I understand, God, why you didn't give me that job. Or maybe you wanted a house and you were going to close on a house and you're thinking, okay, I got to have this house. Hopefully I can get this house. And then you didn't get this house. And then years later, you're able to look back and say, my gosh, it makes complete sense. Now I understand. So sometimes we get glimpses of that. There's some ladies like you, you wanted that guy to marry you. You wanted him to, you wanted him to be the guy. It turned out he wasn't the guy. And when you lost him, you thought, my gosh, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. But now you're with ladies like an even better guy. Maybe you're married to an incredible guy now. And you look back and you're like, Thank you, God, for protecting me from that moron. In the moment, I didn't understand what you were doing, but now I understand it more clearly. So sometimes we do get little glimpses of his ways, but you don't get those glimpses and you don't understand, or you don't, you don't get to see at least a little bit of what God is doing unless you trust, unless you trust, unless you trust him. And I think what some people are struggling with in their faith is not a rejecting of God. Listen to me. Not a rejecting of God, but they're rejecting a God that they have a wrong view of. They have a wrong view of God. And I'm trying to help you understand that maybe that very God, listen this Easter, that very God you've been rejecting because you didn't get your way, that's not the God that I serve. That's not the God of the Bible. Like it's, in other words, it's, it, the God of the Bible is one of trust where we serve him. Here's another thing that I put in my notes. Uh, a lot of people uh, are struggling today. They say, you know what, if God is real, you know what, I'll, I'll trust God to be real. But look, look, he's got to be a fair God. And, and I see this happening. And, he, and here, here's what it is. That, like, you came to know Christ. You thought, you said, I'm going to trust in God. And you thought everything would go great. 
that there would be no brokenness any longer. Everything would be perfect. And I see some people, actually, they actually have a really interesting experience. They'll come to church, they'll say yes to Jesus, and, and even sometimes something very positive happens for them, maybe instant, maybe quickly, maybe within a week, I don't know. And they start to think, my gosh, you know, if God is like this all the time, like, this is great. And then they hit a bump in the road. Again, they're new as a Christian. They're not in the Word, so they're not strengthened yet. And then a bump in the road comes. They get a little upset. They thought they would always win, and, and, and they get upset. And it's like, this is not fair. No fair. You know, it's like when you're playing a board game with your five- or six-year-old, and they finally lose the board game to you or something, and you say, no fair. No fair, and they kind of pitch a fit, you know, and like you're, we're following kind of this, this thing. We did the game, but now all of a sudden, you know, it's not fair, and I think people treat God like this, like it's a game, and you know what? God didn't do this. He didn't make everything perfect, and so it's not, it's not fair. Again, a wrong view. Some of you are rejecting a God that you have a very wrong view of. It says this in John 16 and verse 33. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, here's what it says. We're looking at it now. In this world you will have, what's that word there? You will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He says it right there. There will be trouble. Hey, you're following me. Check it out. There will be, there will be trouble. I wrote in your notes, instead, here's what we've got to embrace that we have a God that is guiding me through my pain, that God will be there. His promise is that he will be with me, and he will guide me through the pain. It's not that there won't be troubles. It's that when there is trouble, God will be guiding, guiding me through. I love what it says in Psalm 46 in verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in an ever-present help in trouble. There will be trouble. He's my helper in the middle of my trouble. Some of you watching this right now, you got into trouble in your life, and instead of seeking God's presence and seeking him to carry you through your trouble, you ran away from him because you were mad that there was trouble. A great example of this sort of understanding of who God is comes from the apostle Paul. You know, we talk about this, but before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. He changed his name to Paul after he converted it for a powerful encounter with Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus. And uh, Paul, before he was that, he was Saul. He was having Christians murdered. He's like, I hate Christians. I hate Christians. But then he has this conversion, says yes to Jesus Christ. And now something powerful is happening in his life. And you know, Paul is this guy. He's responding to whatever God wants. He's like, God, wherever you need me to go, whoever you need me to help, I'm going to go help them. Uh, he suffered big time in his life for Jesus. He was left for dead uh, at one time, beaten and left for dead. He, he was shipwrecked for Jesus, snake bitten, whipped so many times. He had scars on him from being beaten for the cause of Jesus Christ. He was a guy who was actually stoned for the cause of Jesus. I need to probably be clear about this, not recreational stoning. That, that's, not what I'm that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually had rocks thrown at him for the cause of Jesus Christ. Now, if there was one guy who could say, okay, God, I expect it to always go smooth for me at this point going forward, you would think for a guy who, like, was laying down his life for the cause of Jesus that it would be Paul. You know, Paul had a moment, though, the Bible talks about it, where three times he had a problem and he prayed it would go away. Uh, it was a thorn. He described it, something painful in him. He described it as a thorn in his side. He said, God, I need your help. God, I need your help. God, I need your help. And God did not take that trouble. God did not take that pain away from him. In fact, when he sought God, the Bible says his, God's response to Paul was, my grace is sufficient. God's reminder to Paul was, I'm enough, I'm enough, I am enough. What I did for you in your salvation, the forgiveness of your sin, it is absolutely, it is enough. And Paul began to understand, as a matter of fact, that what God wanted to do was show off in his weak times, that God would be made more known in Paul's weak times. And so God says, hey, look, you got to trust me that I'm going to guide you through these difficult times. And until you as a believer understand the power of what it feels like 
to come out the other side with God's help. You just won't understand the incredible nature of this, that in the middle of trouble, I trusted that God would be there, that His presence was there. I, I, I believed that He would be by my side. He was by my side. Until you encounter what it's like to, to say, God, in the midst of the chaos, I believe, I believe, I'm, God, you're, you're guiding me through this pain. You come out the other side until you encounter what that's like. You just don't fully understand this, and so many people are bailing out on the front end. They're like, you know what? Trouble has come. I'm taking my ball. I'm going home. People are asking this question, and I get it. Why do bad things happen to good people? Pastor Gary, I just, and I said before, you know, again, I, I don't fully understand why these things happen sometimes. I, in fact, I'll just say this. Even in the things of faith through Jesus Christ, it doesn't always seem fair. That's right. The pastor says it just doesn't always seem fair sometimes. You know, there's things, again, that, that aren't always going to work out fair. But let me tell you what worked out beautifully in your favor, what was more than fair for you when you said yes to Jesus Christ. And for anybody watching right now who says yes to Jesus Christ, God has a very fair deal for you. Your sin, once and for all, is forgiven through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Your slate has been wiped clean. And here's the promise of real fairness. Ready? Psalm 103 and verse 10, it says this, God does not treat us as our sins deserve. He doesn't give us what we deserve or repay us according to our iniquities, the times we got it wrong. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. He has, for, he has forgiven us that much for those who believe that is the fair deal that God has offered you and I. And he says, hold on to that, hold on to that, hold on to that. Here's the next thing that I see people struggling with, and I put it in your notes, is people will say, hey, pastor, I don't, I don't always feel him. I want to feel him, but I don't feel him. And they'll, they'll get frustrated, and, and they'll begin to drift away from their faith, or they'll begin to doubt, or they'll begin to question. And this is where some of you are, I believe, right now. You're like in this place and there are people watching this. You're a believer, and you know what I'm talking about. You've encountered this. I had somebody in one of our last weeks where we were gathered here. A lady came up to me, and she said, Pastor Gary, I just don't get it. Lately, I've been praying, and I don't feel like God is listening. I don't get the sense or the feeling, the feeling that he's listening to me. I came into worship today, Pastor Gary, and I just didn't feel that he was there. And again, I think some of you, this is where some of you are right now. And then, you know, it doesn't help you when you're struggling with this sort of looking for this feeling, Pastor, I want to believe God is real, but I don't feel. And then you go to your small group, and you hear somebody pull up or come into the small group, and that just a person that drives you crazy starts talking, and they said like this. They said, hey, um, you know what? I'm just incredibly feeling the presence of God right now. On my way to small group, I heard my favorite song, and it was so incredible, and I just felt God and the Holy Spirit. It was, man, God was just moving powerfully, and it was, I was so, and, but before I came to group, I had to stop at the mall and pick up something, but it was about to rain, and God, so incredible. I could just feel his presence. He gave me a parking space right up front. I was able to go in and avoid the rain and come out, get everything that I needed to get done. It was quick. You know, the favor of God was blessing me with the parking space, and then I, and then I got here and feeling like just right before I walked in, hearing from my husband, praise God, he got a raise. And by the way, my son today, I found out, got accepted with a full ride scholarship into an incredible university. And you're sitting there going, uh, I don't feel that. Because today I didn't hear my favorite song on the radio, so I didn't feel nothing. And then, you know, uh, when I went to the mall, I got the last place and the rain poured down on me, and then on my way here, my husband got fired, and then on my way here, I found out my son didn't even get into junior college. And you hear something like that, and you go, where's God? 
And I know it feels like a bit of an exaggeration, but I feel like a lot of people are struggling with this right now in their life spiritually. And here's what I want to say to you. Be careful about measuring God through feelings, okay? You're, you're, you're measuring God through, through feelings because here's the thing. It gets really tricky because here's, I, you know, this goosebump sort of who I feel God can also play out as a non-believer as well, right? Because there's a non-believer who can sit across from a boyfriend or girlfriend who's speaking very beautiful, nice words to them, and they'll get goosebumps and say, ooh, I had a feeling, was nothing to do with God, but they had a, some sort of goosebump feeling. Or, or maybe you, you light a candle at home as an unbeliever, and, you know, you turn on a little Kenny G, and you get the bubble bath ready, and you just have this feeling, you know, just like goosebumps, oh, this is going to be nice. Or you go to your favorite sporting event, and the crowd's going wild after the national anthem, and the jets fly over, and it gives you these goosebumps feeling. And you know what? Unbelievers get feelings as well. Believers, I don't want to play it down. Like, of course, you can feel some things of God. I get that. But if you're relying on that, and then all of a sudden you don't feel that, you could have a sense that maybe God has abandoned you in your life. Is it your fault? Are you alone? Are you the only one that's ever felt this? No. Go to the Scriptures. Here's what you'll find. Time and time again, you see this taking place. How about King David in the Scriptures, Psalm uh, chapter 88, verse 13, but I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? You can see he's not feeling God. C.S. Lewis, great Christian writer, says, you know what? The struggles he had were when he didn't sense God's presence, and he had to work through that in his spiritual life. Heck, go back to Jesus on the cross and some of those final words, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The sense like, oh my gosh, where is God is something we see in the Scriptures time and time again. You're not alone in this feeling of wondering where is God if I don't sense him? But we have to have the right view. And here's what it says in John 6 and verse 30. So they asked Jesus, what sign? Okay, where's the ta-da? Ta-da, where does it happen? Where's that sign? You know, what sign then will you give that we may see and believe you, Jesus? What will you do? What will you do for us? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. You know what? Where's the sign? Give me the sign. Here's what I want to say to you. Some of the most incredible moments of my spiritual life came when I saw God move and there were no feelings. You know what it was? It was just simply faith. In fact, I wrote this in your notes. Instead... It's more about faith. It's more about faith, and consider maybe your heart is hardened. I'll get to that here in just a second, but remember, it is impossible to please God without faith. There's going to be some quiet times. There's going to be some moments where you just like, you're not going to fully sense or see the presence of God the way that you're looking for, but you're, through faith, still journeying with him this Easter season. Maybe some of you need to have a rededication of your faith because I wrote that in your notes and you just saw it in the fill-in. It said, maybe consider your heart is hardened. And look what it says in Matthew 13 and verse 14. You will be ever hearing, Jesus said, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become, here's what it says, hard and calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. You know what? Uh, they're, they're looking for things, but they're not seeing things the way that they want, and they're trying to perceive things the way that they want, and they're completely missing what God is trying to do in their life because they're looking for feelings. And some of you have hardened your heart because you're looking for feelings. Would you allow God this Easter weekend to soften your heart. This is not about feelings, but it's about trusting a God who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross so that you may be forgiven, not for some 
Netflix fair God that gives you feelings the way that you want, but for a God that you are willing to trust through the good times and the bad. Some of you need to hear that. I don't know who out there watching you need to hear that, but you needed to hear that today. Here's the last thing, and I think some people are rejecting God for this, and, and I think it could be quite a few people. And here's what I wrote in my notes. Hey, I, I want to believe that God is real, but you know what? Then I'm going to have to be some sort of religious rule follower, a religious rule follower or follow some God that's going to steal all my joy and just he's all about rules and all about rules. And I get that because before I became a believer in Christ, that is exactly what I thought God was. I actually thought that God was about rules and religious. And, 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 and I saw these people that sort of lived like this. Like I grew up in an area where I watched the religious rule followers. I watched them. I watched the, them like try to be good kids in school, at least on the surface. They were doing all the surface level things right, but behind the scenes, they were really messy, and I watched them. Of course, I always thought they were a little weird because, you know, they dressed with these certain clothes, and they, they had these khaki pants with these sort of braided looking weird belts that they would wear and their penny loafers, they all kind of looked the same. And then they would wear like something that looked like a Star Wars shirt, but it said something different. It said, may his force be with you. You know, ha <laughs> you know, some little play on words there. And I watched them and I, they would try to look the part on the exterior, but on the inside, you knew something wasn't right. And I looked at that and I said, man, I don't want any part of that the do's and don'ts, sort of these and thou's, but people who really don't have the life, you know, aren't really living the life. And so I just made up in my mind that I didn't want to be a part of some sort of religious thing. But here's what you have to remember. Religion focuses on the external rather than the internal. And let me tell you what you want to be right in your life. You don't want the external. You want the internal. Sadly, we're in a world where people push upon you and I and say, no, you need to look good on the outside. You need to look on the outside. God has always been more interested on the inside because here's the way it works. As it goes from the inside, it flows to the outside. So God says, I'm more interested on the inside, but there's a lot of you. You know what? You grew up in a culture. You grew up in some context of, of spirituality that said, if I've got a Bible and if I go to church and if I wear the cross around my neck and if I look the part and I talk the part, then you know what? That's just I'm following some sort of rules and God will love me. God will absolutely love me, and you have missed out on it completely in your life. And Jesus spoke to this very specifically, and here's what he said. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites, you're clean. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you're full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, clean the inside of the cup, of, a cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. You see it right there in the text. On the inside to the outside. God has always been more concerned about the inside this Easter. My reminder to you, God's reminder to you is this, that, hey, what about the inside? Have you been duped into thinking that what you know about Christianity has been passed down to you by rules and following some sort of religious activity? Instead, I put in your notes, God is far more important in a relationship than rules. God is far more important than a, in a relationship. God, God sees, a, he's, sees him more interested. He's more interested in a relationship than rules. And you have to see that. You have to decide that you want that, that you're, you want a relationship with God because it's the relationship with God that works on the inside of you and I, that cleanses us from the inside out. But sadly, I fear that some of you, you might watch this message and say, that's very nice. Thanks for the talk, but I'm going to go back into my sort of religious activity living. I put on the stage here with me, I've got a, a, a seesaw actually here on the stage, and my friend Casey, he actually made this for me. And I, I thought it would be good to show you this seesaw because I think it's a portrait of how some of us operate in our relationship with God, how some of you maybe have operated in the past in your relationship with God. And, and the seesaw to me is a portrait of religious 
activity. And here's what it is. Uh, I, get, I, I get on this, this in life, and, and I look at my life, and I say, okay, I want to do well in life. We all want to do well in life, but then we make a mistake, and it feels like we're weighted down. Okay, I made a mistake in life. The Scriptures call that sin. I went away from God, and I feel like I'm weighted down. Okay, what do I need to do to fix that? You know what I need to do? I need to go to church. I need to get a Bible. I need to wear a cross. I need to do the part, talk the part, look the part, and maybe that'll, it'll balance things out. And, oh, man, I made another mistake. And it's sort of like the scales. We're trying to balance things, you know, because we think we've made too many mistakes. Okay, I could do some good things now. I'm going to do some good things. Okay. And, go, and we just kind of go back and forth, and we're back and forth on the scales of life, the seesaw of life, and we're, we're hoping that maybe some sort of activity will make it all better, that it'll all get better by doing and doing and doing a little bit more. And I see this still to this day, time and time again, though Jesus said, don't do that, don't, that's not what my, that's not what faith is about, that's not what Christianity is about, people are doing that. So we come to a place where we understand we make mistakes. Everybody watching this, you've, you've made a mistake, you, you know that. That we all have, right? Like, I could ask you right now, have you just, you could raise your hand in your living room right now. If you've lied before, raise your, raise your hand. Say, yes, I, okay, I, I've lied before. Some of you didn't raise your hand, and you're a, you know what you are? You're a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You actually are lying right now because you know you've probably lied at some point or another in your life. If I were to ask you, you know, have you ever stolen? This, this is going to get really personal here because some of you would say, no, I've never stolen, but I've been to your house, and you have Newwalk pens at your house. I've seen it. You got those blue pens from Newwalk. You've got them at your house. And so don't sit there and tell me you haven't stolen. What are those pens? Been doing at your house. Uh, some of you, uh, you know, the Bible says that if you've lusted, you, you've, you've, jour you've journeyed away from God. In fact, Jesus said if you've lusted, you've committed adultery. You can raise your hand and say, have I lusted before? And all these things weigh us down. So then how do we get back up? Is it through, okay, do more, do more, do more? No, 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 no. It's through what Jesus has done for us. You know what Jesus says to you and I? He says, when it comes to getting our heart right with God, none of that matters. This formula of a seesaw, this thought that I can go back and, and kind of get things balanced and get things right, is not a part of God's plan. It has nothing, hear me, nothing to do with anything Jesus came for, trying to do more, trying to make myself feel better, trying to look better on the outside. Some of you, your commitment today has to say, I'm throwing away the worry about the things on the outside because, God, I want you to get inside of my heart. And in just a second, I'm going to give people an opportunity watching this. Every week now, we're having dozens of people say yes to Jesus. And I believe in just a moment, dozens and dozens and dozens of people are going to say yes to Jesus. They're, going to, they're on the fence. They're going to cross that line and invite Christ in their heart. And I hope if you're watching, you will be one of them. How about this? The coronavirus came. And it was a moment where you tuned into this and you said yes to Jesus Christ in the middle of all this. How amazing would that be? But you have to say, God, I want you to come here inside my heart. And God is waiting. You know, when Jesus hung on that cross, there was a criminal on one side and there was a criminal on the other side. He was in the middle. And one criminal said, you know what? I don't believe you are Jesus, the Messiah, the promised Messiah who was coming for the forgiveness of all of mankind. The other one said, I believe. That's really where we are right now in this moment. We have people watching this. Some of you say, I believe, and others of you would say, I don't believe, and it's, it, it's that clear of a moment. You could cross over today and say, I believe. And for the one who said they believed, when that guy was going to draw his last breath, Jesus said, I assure you this day you will be with me in paradise. Why will you be with me in paradise? Your sin has been forgiven. You have been made right with God. In Romans 3.22, it says this, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe that faith, that righteousness, that, that the righteousness that you and I could receive comes through faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It is a trusting that says, God, I believe. God, I don't know all the answers, but I trust. 
I believe, I trust in the name of Jesus Christ that my sin could be forgiven, that my past and my brokenness could be forgiven, that I could be made right with God, not by some activity and doing more and more, but by what Jesus has already done on the cross. Right now from where you're watching, would you bow your head and pray with me? Father, right now, people are watching in all different places, and there is there are some who have maybe been thinking about turning away from their faith. They, they didn't find the answers and the timing they wanted. They, they didn't think God was being fair, and so they, got, they were getting upset about staying there. They didn't have that feeling, and they were maybe just, just on the place of questioning whether God is real. And I want to say for those of you that may, maybe God is bringing us, strengthening you today from wherever you're at, I am praying in the name of Jesus Christ that you would have a strengthening in your heart and your life going forward in your faith. Some of you, I've heard some of these things and you're ready to cross over to that moment of decision for you. Right now, I don't know where you're watching from, but if you would just say, you know what, this is that moment where I say, just like one of those criminals on the cross uh, who had made mistakes, who had chosen poorly in their life? Are you going to be like the one who rejects Jesus Christ and takes his brokenness all the way to eternity and eternity separated from God? Or do you say, yes, that Jesus is the Messiah? Yes, I trust in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of my sin. Not going to be on these scales of religious activity, but no, God, get involved from this day forward on the inside of me. I receive the forgiveness of God's one and only Son, Jesus. Christ, from wherever you're at, as heads are bowed, people are praying, watching this in different places. Uh, maybe uh, you're about to invite Christ into your life. You're just in your heart. You're saying, God, I invite you in. I'm ready to turn my life over to you, God. I'm ready to learn more about you. I receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ on the cross. God, I am ready, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you made that decision this Easter weekend, let us know. On newwalk.live, there's a place to click and say, hey, I made that decision to say yes to Jesus. There's links that you can click on the Facebook site as well to say yes. I said yes to Jesus Christ. Let us know what God is doing in your life this Easter weekend. And again, happy Easter. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you gave your life to Christ, then we want to know. We want to point you in the right direction for your next step. So if you're watching newwalk.live, then there's a banner there that you can click. And if you're watching Facebook, then you can um, click the link that's in the chat. Also, our hosts are still available to talk with you and pray with you if you would like. I know they would be happy to. Yeah, and if you're one of our regular folks that goes to New Walk, then we want you to continue to give during this season. Guys, there's, there's links below. We can point you in the right direction. But we want to continue with you partnering with us so we can continue to partner with the community. Oh, don't forget. We are going to have tons of content for you this week on social media, on the kids page, on New Walk page, and on AMP. So make sure you're following along with us and don't miss out. Yeah, so from New Walk to you guys, we just want to say Happy, Happy Easter. Easter.